People like Mr. Winston Derrick and Mr. Everton Barnes were the best thing since life, cheese. But now they're asking the tough questions and asking like the ALP, like we are going for accountability. They're like stale bread. They are no longer responsible journalists seeking the truth. But in my view, these men, just like you, are about country, not about, about putting a man in power to serve his own needs. He has to be answerable to you, the people of Antigua, and more importantly to you, the people of St. John's Rural West. And so tonight I say, it is time for Baldwin Spencer to go and for the UPP to follow him because we have had enough. The UPP is intolerant. You can't oppose them. They are abusive. When you hear your views, they want you to suffer. For two years and two months, the same St. Clair Simon had to do without a pension. Because he's up and down, and you know the stories, because I'm sure there are people right here who are feeling the pinch, who are feeling the pressure. You hear me? That is 205, 205. That is the abusive government that is in charge of this country, Antigua Barbuda. The UPP is incompetent because they're a the cake. They do not care how they spend your tax dollars. They're downright wicked. Because on top of all the taxes, they want to tax your allowances when you hardly have anything left in your pocket. Nine years ago, an individual could plan for the next six months down the line. You can determine you want to take a vacation. You can do something today. You have to wonder where breakfast coming from tomorrow. Am I wrong or am I right? No, no, no. That is reality. And that is what we have come to in Antigua and Barbuda. And that is why I say that it is time for them to go. Like Comrade Marshall said, he may have his decisions that he must make. But when it comes to moving a government are for you, this is right. I want to say to you also that while the Prime Minister is appealing the Jerry Watt decision, let me tell you that burns me to the core because it is a sound judgment and I maintain that all he have a trunk for people who stand up to him. And while he would probably appeal this week's decision, where the court gave our political leader $75,000 for the lies told on him, and at this point I want to acknowledge his presence. Because he's now 74 years old, the court gave him $1,000 for each year of his life. And an extra thousand for good luck. While he busy doing these things, Grace Farm, Green Bay, Five Islands, Perry Bay, Golden Grove, New Extension, Hooks Hill, Cray Hill, while he doing these things, while he's caught up with what I want to call trivial things, where are your needs? When will your needs be priority for this representative? You are responsible for him being Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. Where is the benefit for you, the people of Royal West? You can't follow anybody blindly. Whether their name is Baldwin, Spencer, Gale, Christian, Selvin, Walters, DC, Christian, you can't follow anybody blindly. And it is time for you to stand up and say enough is enough. So when I tell you, when I plead with you, when I ask you, to march on his office for better roads and improved services. I expect you to stand up because you'll be standing up for yourselves and for your children and for Antigua and Barbuda. <laughs> Representation is not about giving people who vote for you jobs. It is about empowering an entire community. 
at the end of the day, people of St. John's were West. I believe enough evidence is before you. You have to make the decision. You live with every day, man. A man driving on the road in a vehicle that you have to pay for. A man goes into a funeral and his vehicle stays on until the funeral is finished. He goes anywhere and the vehicle keeps running. And watch you walk about the road. Watch you try for cut and contrive so the children can go to school. That is not representation. And it is not the representation you deserve. Do not get me wrong. When a man is leader of a country or even leader of a church, he deserves honor and he deserves respect. But it is when he gives you what you are entitled to, you cannot suffer while he's living comfortably. And if people aren't paying bills and you have to pay, they can't understand what you're feeling. And so that is why I'm saying it is time for them to go. And I want to say something just before I leave, just in closing. And I'm going to read again from the Prime Minister's own words. In the last minute, literally the last minute of his budget presentation in 2007. Remember you put him there in 2004 as Prime Minister. Because like you've heard over and over again, he didn't have any power. So in 2007, for the first time, in the last minute of his presentation, he said this. And I quote, Finally, Madam Speaker, I did not get a chance to speak about my constituency. After you don't talk, maybe all the <laughs> But I know, listen, because it's serious, he says, but I know my colleagues in the various ministries. The minister that we talk about now, you know. My colleagues in the various ministries, especially public works and utilities and housing, and the Ministry of Sports will do whatever is necessary to correct the neglect and the court. He continues to say, we are in the process of transforming the community. I am sure the government will be of great help. That is all he said. And no more. I want to say to you tonight, Mr. Representative, that it is not for your colleagues to do. Hello. It is a job for you to do. So you mean to tell me, in 2007, all he could say is that he hopes his colleagues are doing something for Royal West. So am I to conclude that he really, honestly, after all those years before he got elected as Prime Minister, had nothing to offer you? Walk down to Perth. Go to King George. Go to Five Islands where the library is in Tim. A container. And a clinic in there too. That is what you deserve. That is what he's saying to you. You deserve more. No more than that. But I say you deserve far more. I want to say to him tonight, it is 2012, and the transformation promise in 2007 even begin. People of Rural West, I will ask you tonight, as I have asked you before, know that the representative has power, and has had power for eight years, when will your interest come first? The magic month. In 2009, you stood in the lines the magic month. for long hours to vote. And I can never say thank you enough, even to those who didn't vote for me, that anybody could stay in a line for five to six to seven hours to vote. It's clear that change was necessary and it remains necessary and believe you me prime minister we will continue to wait if we have to but we now wait without fighting yes i went to church on sunday morning at kentish and the pastor spoke of the ten bridesmaids and the five of them just had enough oil in their lamp while others walked with spear yeah. when in 2002 i knew i had to walk with spear so i'm still here yes yeah. 
with my spear yes. and I will continue to be here yes. because I'm standing for the people of the constituency of yes. St. George Royal West. Yes. Yes. So Baldwin Spencer, with respect, and those who support you, and I don't mean the average voter, I mean the people in your party who think I want to say to you that I am still here and I will continue to fight because the people of Rural West deserve better and they will get better when they elect me as a representative of the constituency of St. John's Rural West. So until I come again, I bid you good night. And I come again.